Folks, I just got done finishing off, kind of rehabbing this pole barn out here. And while it wasn't brand new from the ground up, I got to make a lot of decisions, a lot of choices. And there's one thing I completely forgot about, even though I went through all the articles and all the videos online about what to have in your barn when you're doing it, what people regret. There's still some things out there that weren't covered. So I'm bummed out that I did not get this done before everything was finished off in here, but let's go through the big regrets at least 10 of them here. That way, if you are going through a brand new pole barn building process or you're rehabbing one, finishing one off, kind of fixing it up like we did here, you can make the best of it. All right, so first, the one that I completely screwed up myself was plumbing, all right? And so this line that comes into the barn is actually ran all the way from our house out here. There's no separate well or anything like that. That's what we have right there. This sink was already here. I'm gonna end up doing something, but I didn't have any foresight to take any plumbing through the walls so I can have outlets or water anywhere else in this barn, no other spigots anywhere else. Nothing was ran before. This, this shop area right here that we're in was already here, but everything else in the barn was unfinished and exposed and that was the time to run it. Didn't think about it. I don't know why. I don't know how that didn't pop into my head, but at this point I'm kind of stuck with keeping the water in this area unless I want to run something exposed and I don't want to do that. So plumbing, that's my big regret. Let's see what else there is. Electric, all right, and that's pretty obvious, right? But you want to have lights, you want to have power in different locations. We went kind of crazy, but we went inside and outside and just like you would, you know, do it by code, putting outlets every so often. I've got 240 in several different places here uh, for maybe an air compressor, uh, maybe a, an on-demand water heater, um, a welder, whatever I might want to do down the road. I just wanted to have the capability to do that and it's all in the walls hidden and buried which is really nice uh, we've also got exterior lights got some gooseneck lights out front have some other um, uh, overhead lights that are above the the garage door bays they're all controlled by a timer so that they come on automatically at dusk and change that obviously uh, as the days get longer and shorter but everything got got redone i, I should pop this off vice electric did an amazing job it's it's super organized underneath here again existing barn I think 16 years old, something like that. So working with what we had down here, this was, um, that was for the cattle fence. Uh, we don't have any animals, but that's what that was for down there. So we're not going to use that at all. But other than that, don't forget your power. We paid a lot of money for that power, but it's better to have it. Oh, and also even put some dedicated circuits outside so we can plug in um, if we have um, um, block heaters, that kind of thing for whether it's tractors or trucks or anything else we have out there, we have those dedicated circuits too. Okay, next up, insulation, all right? So here is some spray on or spray foam insulation. Had it done on the inside of these doors too. We gotta finish these off as well and put some, some weather stripping out here, but uh, spray insulation all the way around all the walls. Had a quote to do the ceiling too, but it was like, I think double the price of doing the walls. There's a lot more surface area up there. So we elected to finish the ceiling off and then do blown in insulation up there. Um, it was way cheaper to do it that way versus doing this stuff up there. Obviously not something you can do after you have things finished off if you're gonna go that route. Uh, it's a very expensive cost to do so. Obviously right now we are reaping the benefits of that. It's very comfortable. This is where we shoot a lot of our uh, YouTube videos in the winter time. So we need a big studio or shop or whatever that's comfortable for the winter, but uh, really nice. It's one of those things you, you hate writing a check for but it pays for itself down the road. All right, so we have two different climate control systems. This guy was already here, a little mini split. Um, I didn't know much about these until we went on a vacation to Puerto Rico and like every place that you went to had mini splits. Worked really well, so it was pretty cool seeing one here already, but this keeps it warm and cold depending on the season, so it works really well. The rest of the barn is heat only, and we had to find the right solution for our needs there. All right, so, the heat for the rest of the barn, we're gonna have three of these systems here. So these are radiant heat tubes. It is propane. Um, we needed something that was quiet and you're seeing the worst case scenario us being at the same level as it right now. This is it. You hear that? It's not very loud. We're basically right next to it. It's not very loud, but we didn't want forced air that was going through it and you know, just making noise all the time. I, I had a, a forced air heater in my garage and it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a loud one. So we wanted quiet heat and that was important to us. Um, it's a really nice heat though too. It just kind of warms up everything. Um, 
to the touch. It's just a, it's a comfortable heat. So there's a lot of options out there, you know, and, and we weighed a lot of them. We got a lot of quotes, uh, a lot of price differences in this. So another big investment that it hurts to do all this stuff up front, especially if you're not financing this, if you're paying cash out of pocket for this stuff to happen, then it, it makes those decisions, I think, even more important on the direction that you go. Obviously, a lot of guys use wood burners of some kind to heat their places or boiler systems. An option we were gonna really consider if this was new and didn't have any concrete in it yet was gonna be in-floor radiant heat. I think that would have been a really good route to consider, but you guys that are out there, I know you'll have a lot of advice and a lot of input and, and good solutions, or maybe maybe you're stuck with a bad solution and, and you wanna let somebody know about that too. Folks, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you own a tractor and you're gonna need more attachments in the future. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Height, okay, do not build too short. It's gonna cost a lot more per square foot if you build a a one level ranch that's just sprawling versus the same square foot that's just built up in a smaller footprint. And the same concept applies to your barn too. And you're gonna see 16 foot interior height here, which is tall enough. We've hit these lights like two times with basketballs. You can shoot three pointers in here all day or miss three pointers in here all day with a 16 foot height ceiling. I think if you go any lower, you're gonna be in trouble. We have two 12 foot doors, then we got a 14 foot door. This door right now is inactive, okay? We took the tracking and everything off. Didn't want to interfere with this side of things, but we've got two doors over there. But one of the big reasons you want to have a minimum of an interior 16 foot height is because of what's over there. And that's going to be a loft area, which you could use for many different things, but you get some vertical storage, a second level of storage. This is extra square footage right here that I can use for whatever I want to do. I'm six foot three, I'm standing up here comfortably. Okay, we've got our shop down below us, just fine. We have walkable, usable storage that's up here too. It's a really smart use of space. And yeah, you could do it if you had a couple feet less, but then you're, you're, everything's getting smaller, right? If you're a taller guy, you're, you're hunching over, or if you want to get a piece of equipment down underneath, Potentially that's not a possibility anymore. So again, build it tall enough. And then also another regret, this did come up on, online, was making sure you build in a mezzanine or a loft or whatever you want to call it. This kind of usable space here really adds value to your setup. Okay, so next up, I don't know if you can see it out there. It's too cold, I'm gonna close this back up. There's a lot of attachments out there for my tractors, all right? and uh, I'd like to keep them covered. So if I was building a barn new, what I would have done is put an overhang or a lean-to on both long sides most likely and put all my overhead doors on these ends here. And in fact, when I was gonna build a barn at our other chunk of property, that's exactly what I had designed and the plan was like 12 foot overhangs on either side. So there's plenty of space to back them underneath there, get them out of the weather, out of the sun, no matter what the angle, the time of year, that kind of thing too. That's valuable space that's really cheap on a cost per square foot, and you don't need attachments to be stored inside, but if you can get them away from the sun so that they're not getting faded, any hoses on them are not uh, deteriorating quicker, that kind of thing, and they're not buried in snow, that makes a big difference. So that's not factored into your, your interior square footage, but it's a cheap add-on in a nice way. I mean, if you build a 100-foot long barn by 12 foot, on either side, that's an extra 2,400 square foot of covered storage, which I could really use. All right, so what are you gonna do about your floor? Concrete floor is awesome. Two thirds of our barn was concrete when we moved in here. The third that's on the far end, the north end was dirt because uh, the previous owner used this for equipment storage, but also a cattle pen essentially. So some, some indoor uh, space for them. And while they were not outside in the pasture, they were in here. We don't plan on having any animals, so what we did is we finished that end off in concrete as well. Again, expensive option, but way better than, than dirt or sand or, or, or gravel or stone. In my opinion, it's just a lot easier to keep clean. You know, this is all stained up and everything else. 
I'm thinking about doing something to kind of clean this up a bit. Might, I, I'm probably not gonna epoxy it. Man, that's an expensive cost to do. Um, but I might see if there's something I could do. And I'm open to suggestions as well. If you've got something that can get rid of some of these stains, polishing it to an extent, um, I'm not sure. But I, everything else is looking so nice that I wanna make the floors match. All right, so I made the decision on the newest area of concrete that we poured to not put a floor drain in. And I did that because we were gonna primarily use that to play basketball, you know, for the kids to have a cool place inside in the wintertime to hang out. And I didn't want a floor drain and a slope floor right in the middle of all that. But in the existing area, we've got two drains. We've got one underneath this Kubota, actually one under the other Kubota too. And you can see where these puddles just kind of slowly slope and drain and, and, and go towards that direction there. It's not a perfect slope. And I think the folks that poured this originally, well, they started, I think, too close to the doors because if it rains really hard, all the rain wants to come inside instead of sloping away outside. So not ideal, but floor drains are critical. We power washed these floors last summer and the floor drains actually backed up a bit. Eventually they drained out, but we could never find where they exited, down on the hillside somewhere, I'm assuming, but I don't, I don't know where they went. Eventually they did drain out, but that's kind of the downside as you do need to stay on top of them to keep them clean. Big decision, I remember this when I was laying out our other barn that we were gonna build was what I was gonna do, where I was gonna put overhead doors, how tall overhead doors, entry doors, windows, all that kind of thing. And I, you know, it's really nice to be able to drive all the way through a barn, but that also means that you can't permanently put any racking or other kinds of storage there. You have to dedicate that space to kind of like a runway. And so I didn't really like that idea so much, but we've got three overhead doors here. We're using two of them now. I think that's plenty for me, for my needs. Um, one would be terrible. I think you need to at least have a couple doors on there. Entry doors, same thing. You know, I would like to have one on all four sides. We've only got one on two out of the four sides. So if you're over on the far side for whatever reason, or that's where your project's going on, it's, it's kind of an annoyance to walk all the way around. Not the end of the world, but an entry door is pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things. As far as windows go, yep, those are an added cost, but it's really nice to have natural light coming into your building when you can. I think a smart way to do it is to get those windows up high, so that way it's not a security issue. Um, depending on the area that you're in, you know you can't just easily smash out a window, get inside. It makes it a little bit more challenging that way if they're up high. If they're south facing, this is our south wall here. You know, I would have liked to have seen a few more windows in there, but um, that's the side I would put them on. If you're trying to save some money, don't put them on the north side, right? Just put them on the south side or the areas that are gonna get you know, if there's trees that are blocking it, don't put them there. Put them in the areas that are open and gonna get the most sunlight and natural light. Light makes a big difference. And talking about lighting, it's very important to us. Using this as a YouTube studio, you gotta have good lighting for video. We spent a lot of money on lights. And in fact, a lot of these are going back because they ended up not being bright enough. We did a whole lighting layout, wanted to average 180 foot candles on the whole place. You know, there's some spots that are brighter, some that are darker. There's reflectiveness that comes into play. If we do do something with this floor to make it a little bit shinier, that's gonna also increase the foot candles as well. But we started off with 28, 24,000 lumen light fixtures. We ended up switching out the middle rows to 30,000 lumen light fixtures because we were not getting the average foot candles that we needed. And honestly, it, it is very bright. I love it in here. I would go even brighter. I think part of that's because I'm blind, but uh, it's really nice to be able to see what you're working on, right? If you're wrenching on equipment or if you're doing some welding projects or other fabrication, whatever you wanna do in your barn to have good light cannot be understated. And again, this is, this is overkill for most folks and I understand that, but the lighting that we had in here to begin with was just a handful of crappy old lights that <laughs> you could hardly see anything. You can tell if it was day or night in here, basically. It looked like it was dusk all the time. But what helps the lighting in general, again, besides the windows that we talked about, you can get away with less overhead lights, a lower expense there too, if you are gonna finish off the inside of your barn. You go with something white or very light in color like this, and that's gonna make a big difference too. So everything kind of works together to help brighten the space up and make it just more usable and a place that you want to be. So that's another big decision, right? What are you going to do with the interior? You're going to leave it unfinished, you're going to finish it off and, and steel. You're going to put drywall up. You're going to put 
four by eight, you know, plywood up. What, what are you going to do to finish off the inside of your barn, or, or are you not going to do that at all? And um, obviously, this is one of the last things that you would do, and you can push that expense down the road and maybe just finish it off section by section if you want to, to, to lower that expense as well. But um, it's nice that it's at the end, right? Because it gives you a lot of time to think about what you want to do. It gets you a lot of time to, to put that plumbing in the wall, to put that electric in the wall, gas in the wall. If you want to do air compressor lines, maybe route those in the walls and the ceilings, whatever else too, gives you the opportunity to do that. I love the way that this looks. It just finishes it off, makes it look great. It's nice to look at. It, it's clean. It's just what I'm looking for in a barn. And this isn't what everybody needs, right? Uh, but for me, this is what I was going for. And I'm really happy with the results. For me, something I did not have a choice in was position on the property where the barn is located at. And that was a big factor for me in our other, at our other property where I was gonna lay that barn out and, and a lot of thought went into that. And I don't love this location for our barn on the property. It's towards the very back of it and right in the middle, sort of, where it just kind of, well, I, I'm an outdoorsman, I hunt, and I would like the whole back of the property to be just for hunting. And now this is a big disruption right in there. And I would have put this barn a lot closer to the house, uh, further towards the front of the property, towards the road, um, where there it's, well, it just feels interrupted back here, I guess is a way to put it. So for me, I don't like that. Um, that's a, I think a big miss uh, that the original owner did here, at least for my purposes, it doesn't align very well, but there's not a lot I can do about it now. And I think the most obvious one is gonna be, you're not building it big enough, right? And so just like, Trucks, trailers, gun safes, pole barns are the same thing. Build it as big as you possibly can. If you think, I don't need more than a 30 by 40 barn, well, you probably do, okay? That's, <laughs> that's not very big. By the time you, you put some workbenches in it, some shelving around, store a few things in there too, you're not gonna have a lot of space left over to walk around and do things. And you gotta build and plan for down the road. And you can get away with that if you do things like put those lean-tos on as well. That's gonna give you that extra kind of bonus space. If you build it tall enough and get some loft space up here too and really take advantage of things and do them in a, a smarter, cost-effective way. But still, I'm telling you, if you think, yep, that's what I need, go bigger than that, all right? I, I have learned my lesson over and over and over buying other things. And trailers, I've, I don't even know how many trailers I've had. I've had so many trailers because I always need more, which means then I need bigger trucks to tow them too. Gun safes, I've gone through a whole bunch of gun safes too. You know, your, your collections, your things just continue to grow. We don't like to get rid of things all that often. So maybe, maybe you're better at that than, than I am. And you can get rid of things when you get something new. But oftentimes you never know when you're gonna need that old thing, so you keep it around too. So hope that helps. I'm sure there's some things that I forgot, but that's a pretty exhaustive list, I think. So what are your big regrets when you were building your barn? Leave a comment down below so you can let other people know about what it is help them out, let them not make the same mistake that you did. Now our business is selling tractor attachments. So if you own a tractor, you need something for your front end loader or your three point hitch, maybe a grapple, a snow pusher, pallet forks, a rototiller, a brush hog, a flail mower, go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. And if you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more, see what's going on around here, hit that subscribe button down below. It is completely free. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.